Hi, Dennis here. The question is, what happens in my body when I hyperventilate? When you hyperventilate, you overventilate the lungs. And what, what the problem in, in this is, is that your amount of carbon dioxide will go down. It will go down too much and your body will try to help you out. When you have asthma, this will happen inside of your body with your bronchi. But when you, have, you don't have asthma and you only hyperventilate, this will happen in normal situations with your blood vessels, with your uh, um, cardiovascular uh, system. There are small muscles around your blood vessels, you, then you can forget about this, but it's almost similar. This will also happen into your intestines. This will also happen in your sinuses. So, here I have a small device I can put on, and this will measure the amount of blood um, oh, I'm sorry, of oxygen connected to my red blood cells. Now it says 96, for me it's really low, 96% of my um, red blood cells have an oxygen connection. So when I try to hyperventilate, it's out now. Put it on again, put it on my finger, Try. I'm starting to feel dizzy now, because what will happen, less oxygen is released from my blood into my brain. It's not like some people think more oxygen is going into my brain and that's why I feel a little bit dizzy. No, less oxygen is going into my brain and you can see it still is 97 percent okay this will tell you the truth it's not more oxygen which is released into the brain it's less and that's why my my body is trying to help me out with making my blood vessels m more small so the Haldane effect, the Haldane you can check out on Google and I'll also make a, a video about it. Haldane effect is the carbon dioxide which is produced in my body needs to get out through breathing out. So when I do this, I tend to breathe out a lot of carbon dioxide. So that way my carbon dioxide levels in my body go down. My body doesn't want it to go down that much because it needs to have kind of a percentage of about, let's say, uh, at least 4.5% of carbon dioxide. It's just a number. But to give you an idea, when you hyperventilate, you can have about 3.7% carbon dioxide into your body. You can forget about this number, but it, I, I hope I can give you an explanation what will happen. If I breathe out too much, my carbon dioxide will go down and the release of oxygen in my blood, in my blood cells, connected to my rot, red blood cells, is not released enough. So you just saw the amount of oxygen in my blood will stay the same but the amount of oxygen which is released into my cell, cells, for example, is released into my head, will be less. So what happens into your body when you hyperventilate? You, you breathe too much air in and out, but especially the breathing out is the problem. You breathe out too much carbon dioxide, and then the connection between oxygen and my red blood cells will become stronger, to keep it simple. So there's enough oxygen most of the times. There's enough oxygen in your blood, but the release of oxygen into my brain or into my muscles or whatever tends to become lower. And then my body will try to help me out.
So last example, when I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm hyperventilating without me knowing it, sometimes I had it in the past myself. I can feel like my heartbeat is going up and I don't know why, but it's making me nervous. And then I tend to breathe even more because what is going on? I feel my heart rate going up and I tend to breathe even more. So less oxygen is released into my brain. I start to feel a little bit dizzy. My heart is going up, it's pounding. And then I feel nervous, then I feel stressed. And at the end, I can, I can even go into an anxiety mode. So by training your breathing, your norm of carbon dioxide in a standard, like normal every day, will go up. And my bronchi, when you have asthma, or my cardiovascular system, will be more normal. So I have a lot of um, examples of especially uh, women, they have cold hands or cold feet. And when they start to train, they almost never have cold hands or cold feet again, you know, or they go outside when it's minus 10. But, but in normal situations, they then have warm hands and warm feet. And uh, when you start to train your breathing, um, the color in the face comes a lot back again. It all has to do with not the bronchi, but in this example, I'm, I'm pointing out the cardiovascular system. If my, my carbon dioxide goes up, the blood vessels tend to open and even the smaller blood cells as well will go open and that's why I feel a lot more warm in my head or in my hands or in my feet as a standard. I can see it's seven minutes now so I'm sorry it's a little bit long video but I hope I'll give you an answer and see you next time. Bye bye.